Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Papion, and this video is a collab. Last year, I used to do tons of collabs with the Lolita YouTubers uh, Facebook group, and this is another one. I'm finally trying to not be lazy, and I'm going to film one this time and edit it on time, hopefully. I will say, out of the amount of main pieces in my collection that I forgot the number of, one, I'm waiting on two dresses that aren't here, so they're not factored into the equation at all, and this dress, um, which is the Metamorphose Magical Artifact JSK, or Ribbon JSK, in Heliotrope from the 2021 restock, this, like, January, did not fit into any of the prompts, so she gets to be the star of the show for the entire video. That's the JSK I'm wearing. I'm wearing a little cardigan over top of it because I didn't feel like putting on a blouse. Hope you don't mind. At least I've covered up my shoulders. I'm not a heathen. Um, <laughs> I mean, it is hot, so I don't really want to wear like an actual blouse anyway. This is full of holes, so it's really nice and airy, even though it's actually a very like thick polyester fake wool. Um, but let's get into the prompts. I actually wrote a sticky note so that I've got it. So the first prompt is the oldest main piece that you own. I'm sure a lot of my um, comrades in the Facebook group are probably going to do oldest by release. Now that's really weird for me. I've got like two brand dresses and then everything else is an indie brand. And so a lot of times it's really hard to tell which release from an indie brand it is if the um, main piece has multiple releases if you bought it used. But I also just don't really care when the pieces were released if I like the piece and it fits me. So I'm going to show you the oldest acquired piece of mine. My oldest acquired piece is actually three main pieces because I bought them all the same weekend. There's my sweet Mildred floral uh, OP that's got this Peter Pan collar. It's got these pretty little jars that I like to think of as like little witch ingredients or like little pieces for alchemy. I like to and still a lot of theming on this dress that probably isn't implied. Um, but that one gets to be in another prompt later, so we're gonna put it back to the side. I also got this A Got to Designs dress, um, and it's a Rome dress, okay? I study ancient Rome as like one of my majors. In fact, I'm right now above my bookshelf right here is my school books, and about half of the books on this shelf are about um, classical literature. And by classical literature, I mean like ancient Greek and Roman, like classics. So I've got like the Iliad and the Odyssey. I've got a book about mythology. Ugh. I've got Apuleius' Golden Ass. N nameless to say, this is the stuff I read. Um, I've also got Ovid's Metamorphoses, um, The Aeneid by Virgil. Tacitus. I've got a lot of books down there, but um, I wanted to show you guys some of the more memorable. I mean, everyone knows about the Iliad and the Odyssey, so that one's really memorable. I think that um, Apuleius's Golden Ass is just a really fun book to talk about because it's got ass in the title, and yes, I'm 21, but I'm still a child. Yes, it's about a golden donkey, but the title is Golden Ass, and that's just a really funny book title to me. Um, it's always just a fascinating subject. And while I hate learning Latin, I love looking at the artifacts and architecture from a past time. And so I just, I fell in love with this dress. It's a little bit big on me, actually. Um, I think this would probably be a size two or three on uh, it got to design's uh, new sizing scale, but I got this before she had that sizing scale. So I think this is probably her standard size at the time. And it's very generously shared. It's just great. Um, I feel like I don't give this dress enough praise on the internet, but I love it. You guys should love it too. If only she had more of these dresses, but I think it was a one-off, but it's mine. And I'm so happy I have it. So to the side. I feel weird because I'm running out of like surface room. So I just kind of put the dress on the ground right after I praised it a bunch. And it makes me feel bad. Um, then this, if I really have to say one particular dress that I bought first, it was this one. I bought this one physically a couple hours before the others. So this is another Sweet Mildred OP. This one's more of her standard style of OP where it's got these little puff sleeves and it's got the little um, flowery, not flowery, uh, frilly 
collar and the double elastic waist. It's a little bit shorter than some of her other dresses, but it's got beautiful like polka dot lace on the bottom. And the print kind of turned a little orange and red in the armpits, which isn't my favorite, but it's an old dress now. Um, and I don't plan on getting rid of it. <laughs> so who cares? I can have red armpits all I want. But um, this was the first Lolita dress I ever bought and I still love it. I still think it's gorgeous. I want more like it, to be honest. Maybe more of her other OPs that are similarly gothic, but with different prints, of course. I'm not a big fan of the print um, itself. Like, I love the concept of the print, but I don't like the quality of the print and how it kind of like ran, but she doesn't make her own fabric. She just bought the fabric and makes the dresses, but she does make her own patterns and I love the pattern of the dress. The actual cut of it is great. I love it. So this is the oldest dress in my wardrobe by when I physically bought it. I have no idea if it's the oldest actually. <laughs> the next is the newest dress. I'm gonna do the newest acquired dress because that makes the most sense. I don't, I think it was also manufactured the newest because I bought it from a made to order. Of course, this doesn't count the two dresses that I have in the mail or pre-ordered, I guess one of them's not in the mail at all yet. Um, but the newest dress I have <laughs> is falling off the hanger is Lady Sloss Tea Time at Grandma's. I think this is the JSK2 in blue. Again, I love it. It's got partial back shirring, but it also came in a bunch of sizes, so it fits me great. It's got pockets. It's a really nice material. Um, it's definitely a synthetic material, but it's kind of stretchy, but it's very thick as well. It's also fully lined. The lining, I feel like it's cotton. It feels like cotton lining, so that's more breathable. The lace is this gorgeous, like, teacup lace that is um, unique to Lady Sloth. And if Lady Sloth had more prints that I loved, I would get more Lady Sloth dresses. But a lot of their dresses are a little too sweet for me, especially, like, their gothic prints are just a little sweet. Like, I love my spooky macarons as a concept, but I don't think it would fit with my wardrobe at all. Like, ugh. That's the one reason why I didn't get it. Well, I guess there's also the price. Hmm. Might get it as like a casual piece if I find it on second hand eventually, but I uh, told the story of why I bought this dress in, I think it was my May and April Lita haul because I did a combined two month for that one. But it's a gorgeous dress. I totally recommend that you get it if you can find it. And it's in your size. Don't get it if it doesn't fit you. It's the most expensive. You might say, well, Cecilia, you said that the dress that you're currently wearing isn't in any of the prompts, but it's quite an expensive dress. It's one of your only brand dresses. Why wouldn't that be on the list? What would be more expensive than that? And I want to remind you all that we are in the dreaded sweet boom, which doesn't really apply to me most of the time, but it did for this release. <laughs> it is the... 2020 MTO round JSK in the ivory cut of Honey Cake. I feel a little bit um, not comfortable saying how expensive this dress was on, on the internet. But let's just say it was above $500. But I did get the KC with it, so I do have the matching head bow. And it came with all of the parts. It was brand new in a bag. Um, it, it was great condition, but like, <laughs> I'm not sure it's really worth $500. And yet I still paid that much for it. Um... I also did eventually get the purse, but that was not in the same order, and that was like another hundred something dollars. But um, this this is the most expensive dress in my wardrobe, and it's not even the one that matches my wardrobe the best. It is the least matching of my wardrobe out of the dresses I own. And it's really cute though, I really like it. Um, I do like styling it, but I'm terrified to wear it out in public because I am afraid that I am going to ruin it because it's ivory. Like, the second you spill something on this dress, it might ruin itself, and I'm very scared. I'm also terrified of wearing it too much because I know that um, the original release, since it was cotton, the reds at the bottom of the print would run when you washed it. And so it's like, okay, the less I wear it, the less I have to wash it, the less I wash it, the less chance that the polyester, which doesn't usually run, might run. I know it's probably not going to happen, but I'm paranoid, so... She doesn't get worn, so that I don't have to wash her, so that I don't have to ruin her. But she is adorable. I love her. She, um, she might not be the most, um, useful dress in my wardrobe, but she is definitely one of the ones that sparks the most joy for no reason. 
Next is the cheapest garment in my wardrobe. And this one's a little bit of a cop out, but um, it's a skirt that I made for myself. I think I spent like $45 on materials for this skirt. And it's just a cute little skirt. Um, it's got this Hogwarts print on it that I got from a local chain fabric store and some really scratchy lace that I also got from the chain fabric store. And I didn't use a pattern at all, so the skirt's a little wonky, especially when you wear a petticoat under it. But it does have a pocket, <laughs> which is nice. It's a nice enough pocket that I can fit my entire phone in it. My phone is filming, so that doesn't help, but um. I also have a removable waist bow on it. I really do like this skirt. It's not the easiest to cord because of how wonky it looks. But it also, even though it's not worth much and it's not perfect, it did get me back in the idea of sewing. And as soon as I've got more free time and more free money, I do want to make more skirts and or try making JSKs, um, at least for myself, because I do like the process of picking out all of the materials and making a little cute outfit for myself with it. Um, but right now I'm broke. <laughs> Just got hit with that new student uh, tuition cost. Um, and my car is being a little expensive and bougie lately. So that's, this might not be a project until like early next year to make more things for myself. But yeah, um, I would say that she costs somewhere under $50. Now if it's a cop-out answer, um, the next question is my biggest Lolita bargain, which is my second cheapest main piece, probably. And if you don't like that answer, I'll give you the next one. And if you don't like that answer, my Rome JSK from question one, I, that was only $100 when I bought it, which is really nice. This JSK from Agata Designs, I consider my biggest bargain because I paid about $130, I believe, for a Lucky Pack and it came with this entire dress in it. And since my other Agata Design dress is about $100, that means that this must be similar or cheaper. So it's really nice. I really like it. Um, I will say that um, if I start selling my dresses, this might be one of the first dresses to go just because it's very similar to my Rome JSK and I like that one a bit more. And so I tend to cord these two the same exact way, which is a little bit difficult. Um, and so if I decide to pare down my wardrobe to make it more cohesive, this one might get the boot. But then again, I got it in a lucky pack. I didn't pick it for myself. So part of me is like, you didn't pick it. So maybe that's one of the reasons why it doesn't have that special place in my heart with the other ones. I'm still really happy I have it. And it does really nice. I especially like wearing it casually just as like a sundress, no blouse, maybe a little bit of jewelry out with uh, my boyfriend on dates or going to parks and stuff. And I also really like how thick the material it is. Um, <laughs> It's almost like <laughs> upholstery material for like pillows, but um, it's very thick and because of how thick the fabric is, it has a really nice unique drape. It almost doesn't need a petticoat under it because it kind of floofs itself up. Um, again, it's also very uh, stretchy, but it's also not quite as big as the Rome Grass K. This one probably fits me better, but um, I would consider this one my best bargain. <laughs> the next question, the biggest waste of money in your wardrobe. I'm not going to say honey cake, but part of me would say honey cake because I don't wear it that much. But honey cake just brings me so much joy for no reason, just to know that I have it and that if I wanted to wear it, I could. I know that that's weird, but we all have those stupid dream dresses that we have for no reason, okay? I think we all do. Um, but I actually picked two dresses for this and I've got a very particular reason why I picked these two dresses. They're both of my Violet Fane uh, JSKs. So the main reason why I would consider these the biggest waste of money in my wardrobe is that I knew when I bought them that I didn't like the cut of the bodice. I thought that both of the bodices were really not my favorite and they're very difficult to cord. So it's very easy to point out with the Asylum JSK, these weird triangle flappy bits make it really difficult 
to pick blouses to wear with this JSK. Because most of my blouses have some sort of Peter Pan collar, and having a Peter Pan collar layered with this weird triangle angular collar thing is really awkward, and it's just, it's not easy to cord with the weird triangle. So I wish I had just gotten it in a skirt, because I knew I didn't like this, um, this cut when I got it, and I still got it for some reason. I think the skirt was sold out when I tried to buy it. Um, it's not my favorite, but I love the print at the bottom. The material is not my favorite. I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Violet Fane is not my favorite quality, but their prints are almost unmatched for my personal taste. So I got them anyway, and I'm not really happy with the cut of it, and if I ever find a skirt in my size in the same print, and the same colorway, obviously, I like these colorways the best, I would probably get it, and I would probably sell this one. <laughs> Now, if you want, like, the best reason why this particular dress, if I had to only name one, is the biggest waste of money, I bought it twice. I had to buy the smaller version, because I thought that one would fit me, and it didn't, so I ended up giving that to my friend Mary, and I bought a second one, and I still don't like how it fits me. This one is way too big on me, um, and I still think that I would rather have the skirt, so, um... I think it's a little stupid to have to buy the same dress three times to figure out what version of it you want. But um, if I ever find this dress and a skirt that would fit me, I would get it. Because <laughs> the print is amazing, but I hate the bodice. The bodice, I don't like how it like cups down into like this weird heart shape. It's not flattering. The bodice itself isn't that flattering. The straps are kind of like weird. Um, I don't know. I don't like the bodices on these dresses, but I love the print. So, um, if you ever find these for sale in skirts in these colorways, give a girl like a DM or share it with me or something. Maybe not on YouTube, find me on like Instagram because um, it definitely might be worth my while because I feel like I would enjoy them so much more if I had them in skirts instead of JSKs. But yeah, <laughs> those are my biggest waste of money in my Lolita wardrobe. And now, the final question, question number seven, I don't know why we only have seven questions, but I didn't make this, is your top three dresses in your wardrobe. So, sorry Magical Artifact, you missed out by being a brand dress, and I actually don't like wearing brand dresses, they freak me out, I'm worried I'm gonna ruin them. You might have remembered that when I was talking about honey cake earlier. But my favorite three dresses to cord, and to wear, and in general, thematically, I think I already mentioned that with this one. I love this dress. It, I can, I know it's an OP, which makes it harder to cord, but I love the color of it. I love the print. I love the lace at the bottom, how simple it is, kind of a cottony lace. I love how thick the material is. I also really love the colors on it. Um, I know it's a very classic dress. And I, while I do wear classic and gothic, I think that if I had to pick one, I would probably be gothic. But I just love this dress so much. It just got such pretty, like, flowers and script on it. It's super stretchy and it fits me really well. It's very easy to layer with different pieces because of how simple the bodice is. Like, it's got this collar, so it's really hard to layer with shirts and blouses underneath it. Or sometimes with um, things over top of it. But I can wear tons of necklaces on here. I can wear my body chain because there's no like buttons going down the front of it or anything. I just, I really like it. It makes me really happy. This is one of my top three dresses. I don't think I'd be able to do like a top one, two, three, but this would be in the top three. I might be able to do a top one dress or top one main piece, but um, this is definitely my top three. I just... It just makes me feel so cute and feminine, and I really enjoy it. It's just such an amazing, simple, beautiful dress. <laughs> Next, after all of my Violet Fane slander, here's a Violet Fane appreciation post for the Cult of the Sea blue skirt. <sighs> I love this skirt. Now, courting skirts is sometimes difficult because you gotta deal with what's going on up here. But I love this skirt. I love the material that it's made out of. I think that it's a little tinge big on me, 
but I can deal with it. Um, the front of it is non-elasticated, but the back is elasticated, so it's very stretchy. Um, there's no pockets or anything, but it's fine. Um, there's lining in it, and the one major complaint I have about it is that there's no um, lace or trim or ruffle at the bottom, um, but I can deal with that. I can deal with that. I also just, again, I love the print. That's my favorite thing about Violet Fane is their print aesthetics and quality. The print is always great. Not always greatly printed, but the actual print, the art style is amazing. The concepts are amazing. How they're positioned and placed, amazing. Like look at little jars, little guns and vials. And there's the Necronomicon over here. And then there's a big old Cthulhu. And I love all the tentacles. And I think that this is a very difficult color to match. It's kind of like a very dark teal. It is not a navy. It is not royal blue. It's not sax blue. It's a very weird, like, dark teal color. Um, almost like a bluish green. And it's very difficult to match the color. But I actually love the color. And I love how the um, details on it are grays and beiges and a little bit of like green algae and stuff like there's a little algae on Cthulhu at the bottom of him and i just think that the colors are amazing um when i first was trying to buy this i wanted the black version i thought the black would be easier to cord because this color is so unique and weird but once i got the blue in person i don't care that much about the color anyway i'll wear it with ivory or brown or black. I don't really wear it with white much, but I did a little bit. Um, I usually wear it with white and another color, but I don't really mind that the color is so unusual because the color is so perfect for the print. So this, this, this is probably in my top three. This would probably be tied for second with my pink OP. And now I saved the best for last. If you are familiar with me at all, you probably know exactly what dress I'm about to pull up. Time for number one. It's my custom Sweet Mildred Vintage Tarot JSK. She made it in my size so it fits me really well. I will say that the bodice is a little long for me so next time I get a JSK from her um, that's custom made I will try to take a um, bodice measurement to tell her where my actual waist lands so it fits me a little bit better. But um, other than that, it fits all the way around my body really nicely. It's very flattering on me. I love the detail on the straps. I love the detail around the neckline. This is a removable bow, so it's great for layering. I love that down the princess seams, or close to princess seams if they're not. I'm not that good at sewing to know. But they look like princess seams. There's also this lace trim. I think it'd be nice to have some sort of lace trim or piping around the waist, but I don't really mind because I've also got a overskirt that I bought to wear with this dress as well as other ones. The skirt is gorgeous. There's a little lace of trim near the bottom so the skirt doesn't look too empty. And another great piece of lace at the very bottom of the skirt that's kind of pointy and triangular. Um, the actual print of the dress is gorgeous. Um, it's got these vintage uh, tarot cards they are actually really colorful when you look at them in person. Um, of course, when you look at it from afar, all the colors kind of just melded to this uh, like beige color. But when you look up close, it's actually ivory with like browns layered on it and reds and greens and yellows and purples and blues. <laughs> and I just, I really enjoy it. And whenever... I'm looking at new dresses and I send a link to my boyfriend. He's like, oh, that looks like your style. And it's like, what is my style? It's like, I don't know. Things that remind me of the tarot dress. And he's always talking about this one. He always compares my future buys to this one because he knows how much it really suits my personality and my style and how much I like this dress. And so <laughs> there's also that. I, I think it's a beautiful dress. It also looks really nice on its own. I don't think I've actually worn it out as just a, like a sund sundress style without um, any shirt or blouse, or I've worn it out with this before on top of it. Um, but it looks nice when I'm putting it on like that. And this is, this is my number one. 
it makes me the happiest out of all of the pieces of my wardrobe. It's also really nice to coordinate. I will say that um, the colors are very desaturated, so a lot of times if I have um, like normal jewel tone colors, like I've got a bright red and silver necklace from Puvithel, it doesn't quite look right with the reds in the print because they're very desaturated, more of a brownish red, like a burgundy. And most of the colors are like that. But it's still super pretty. I just, I want more this. This is what I want my entire wardrobe to be. You know? Just dresses that fill me with as much joy and like, mystique. The print is kind of mystical in a way. I really like that about it. There's always more to look at at this print, and yet it's not overwhelming at all. Like, it kind of just fades into itself at far away, but then up close there's just so many details to look at. Let me just, like, stand up so you can just, like, admire the print. I just, I love it so much. I'm sure in this frame you can see, like, the magician and strength and the hermit and the wheel of fortune, the priestess, there's the world, the devil, <laughs> death. I'm just, it's just so much to look at. And it's just, this is my favorite. <laughs> now, you, I don't really want to play favorites of my wardrobe that much, but if I made a tier list of all of my dresses, like how Sweetie Sprout did it, this would always be number one. <laughs> I also really like that I don't have to choose gothic or classic with this dress, because it's both. If you look at the print, it is pretty gothic to have tarot cards in the print, especially in the color scheme that it is. It's very muted, and paired with the black, it's very gothic in that way, but it's not like overwhelmingly, I only wear black. It's not overwhelmingly gothic like Moi Moitié, but it's not too cutesy at all. I would say like dresses like this are quintessential elegant gothic Lolita. <laughs> And I feel like that's where I want to go forward going in my wardrobe are these beautiful, unique gothic prints that are not too overwhelmingly sweet and aren't too plain, just black and blue. I do like how unique the coloration is on it as well. But yeah, I love it. Oh, I don't even, I didn't even mention that the um, buttons for the adjustable straps are little roses. They're roses! It's a little hard to tell because they're like a gunmetal gray, but they're beautiful. It's also fully shared in the back. Look at all that sharing! It's so stretchy! Mm, I love it. So there you go. There's my closet confidential. A look into all of my main pieces. Now technically the prompt said like, oldest piece, most expensive piece. I only did main pieces because like, when it gets to questions like, my favorite pieces. It's really hard to say what my favorite accessories and blouses and stuff are. Um, like my Cthulhu brooch from Violet Fane. I love that brooch. I wear it like all the time even in my normal clothes. I love that brooch. But um, my favorite blouses. I really like my cream and sugar Lolita Saks Blue cut so I don't like cording it that much but I really like how comfy it is to wear just normally. I don't have that much things that go with Saks Blue, but I just thought it'd be good to have some Saks Blue because I do have some Saks accessories. Um, but a lot of like my accessories are either staples or they're just like fun one-off items. Like I've got a witch hat from Sweet Mildred that's great for all my witch cords. Is it my favorite item? No. But uh, I just thought it'd be easier to, to qualify my main pieces. Let me know, like try answering some of these questions for your own wardrobe. Um, feel free to make a video if you want. Um, but also if you just want to comment and tell me what's your oldest piece or your newest piece, your most expensive, your cheapest, your best bargain, the biggest waste of money in your wardrobe and your top three favorites. You can choose any of them that you want to do. Um, I will let you know that YouTube doesn't like you linking things, so just try to give me the best name that you can for it. And if you've got a bunch of um, unique items in your wardrobe that would be hard to, say, look up this on the library, you can describe them to me and maybe I would think they're cute. <laughs> I will let you know. 
My favorite dresses are the ones like my tarot dress, where they're just very elegant, subtle, goth, beautifulness. And, um, <laughs> I like dresses like that. So, don't be disappointed if you tell me it's sugary carnival. It's like, oh yeah, unicorns are fun, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, I don't wear sweet. So, um, I've been Dr. Papillon. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Also, to the side, um, I think that I'm going to put the video at my end screen, and that's going to be the playlist for all the other cool people who made videos just like this one. So watch it. There's going to be a bunch of people in there.